friends i am dr amrekar and in this video i am going to discuss an important aspect of our medical practice and that is don't ignore mental health friends physical health is as much important yes but the mental health is equally important at every stage of our life and what does this mental stage really mean to us it has many facets besides just the cognition it has included emotional health philosophical health psychological health spiritual health social health so many facets of mental health put together are equally important in every day's life but when such parameters are upset to a point that it disturbs our routine daily function then only we call it a disease but friends many of us have such problems but we are able to manage somehow and therefore we don't consider them as disease but why do such disease appear at all they are multifactorial they are largely genetic but along with that there are environmental factors the psychosocial factors and all such epigenetic issues which come together in a genetically susceptible person then he comes out with upset in daily routine life and then we call it as a mental health disorder but this mental health disorders of largely two types one primary mental health disorder like depression schizophrenia bipolar disorders and i'm not going to discuss any one of them they are totally a uh, psychiatric disorders and concerned with their expertise that you need but in routine practice we do see secondary mental health disorders what are these secondary mental health disorders they are due to diseases which are not primarily under mental health but certainly upset mental health and in simple terms what this mental health really refers to is the way we think the way we feel the way we behave the way we act and i'm sure each one of us has some such abnormalities sometime or the other but we manage our daily routine but when it upsets then it's called a disease as i said now i'm going to address only two important issues about such secondary mental health issues one is a neurodevelopmental problem in children and the most common that is getting more and more prevalent is an autism spectrum disorder friend this is a disorder of a social interaction and a restricted or repetitive behavior pattern this is certainly genetic but the environment and the other factors decide how severe or how early it would manifest and it is considered that even in india maybe about 10% of children do have such a disorder but those who are very mild on the whole spectrum are not even recognized but those who are severe are obviously visible the point is such disorders can be diagnosed very early in life and when you come to autism you can certainly be able to diagnose them even in infancy and how do you do that and that is where as i said it's a disorder of social interaction so the newborn you follow very closely and at about 6 or 8 weeks he learns to socially interact with the parents with people around he looks around he smiles he knows that somebody is talking to him he may not know what is what they are talking about he is able to smile at that he is able to start making some sounds as if he starts interacting this is a normal milestone friends if a child at 3 months is not doing it your antenna should go up and say oh there is something wrong with this child it may not be necessarily the autism but it could be a neurodegenerative disorder it could be a brain defects but it could as well be hearing defects and 
it is important that those defects become visible very early in life, even to parents. But this is not. And if the doctors don't attend to this small little thing, thereafter, when the child starts interacting more and more, he responds to his name. He knows that uh, the mother wants to pick him up, so he puts his hands up out. And then this interaction takes him to start understanding, receiving language, then a non-verbal gestures, and thereafter even a verbal talk, reading, writing, everything depends on that. Today, friends, we see a child of three years who has yet not learned to talk, and that's why they come for a consultation. It's too late to diagnose autism at that age, and therefore, it's very important you follow a newborn and an infant very closely. Earlier days when the grandparents were around, they had a reasonable experience of picking them up. But today with the nuclear families, that is just not available and it is left to the doctors to pick it up early. And thereafter, the entire life becomes quite upset and they are obviously behaving abnormally, thinking abnormally. As I said, they were restricted and repetitive behavior. They like the same shirt to wear. They like the same food to be delivered every day. They don't like changes. They are very happy to be with themselves. They do not mix with people. And what kind of environment makes it worse? The environment which does not allow them social interaction. Friends, when I was young, I have seen uh, my grandmother talking to a newborn while dressing him up or while giving him a massage or giving him a bath. And I used to wonder what that newborn understands, but she was setting up an interaction between that newborn and herself. And I think those interactions are almost deficient today. And worse to happen thereafter is these children are exposed to inanimate objects. With them they relate, like maybe the cell phones, the TV images, and therefore, they are not exposed to human interaction. They already have a genetic defect and the environment triggers it off and they come out with all the symptoms. Friends, I want to impress on you that this is getting more and more common today, not because the genetic defect is on the increasing level, but the environment is getting more conducive to manifest it and it's our job to pick them up early. When you pick them up early, they can be managed reasonably well. And remember that these children have often more higher IQ than you and me. But their performance is very poor. I want to impress on them this aspect of mental health. It's not a mental health disorder, but there is a lot of overlap of a mental health problem with this neurodevelopmental problem. Having said this, this is most important. Friends, don't forget that many illnesses also lead to secondary mental health problems. And especially the problems which are chronic, which are incurable, which are severe, like maybe a chronic skin disease which is incurable, maybe a cancer that is recently diagnosed, or maybe any such illnesses. And in that, much before the illness can harm, the person gets harmed by the mental health abnormalities which is triggered by such chronic illnesses. Friends, we must realize this problem and how do we address this problem? And that is where a counseling comes in. I talked about severe illness, chronic illness, but friends, even minor illness ends up with a fear of something else happening more than getting better. And during this COVID or influenza season, one is afraid whether one would end up with an ICU and never return back. This kind of a stress mind in a genetically susceptible person who already has got some mental health gene abnormality, but if the environment is good and conducive, he walks throughout his life without being even recognized or without coming in the way of routine. But if the doctor does not support him, a doctor does not counsel him, does not make the environment more conducive to get out of those stress situations. Then only he will not end up with 
a mental health. Friend, those who have a cancer or such chronic incurable diseases have died of depression much before the cancer kills them. These are preventable issues and I thought in the last series of Lest We Forget, when we have discussed several symptoms and their analysis, I should also talk about the mental health and don't forget to address the mind of every patient that you see, however mild the physical problems for which he may have come to you, because if he is susceptible not to tolerate stress, then he will come out with some mental health problem. I hope I have made a point. And this is the last of the series. And now onwards, we will start discussing uh, relevance and the analysis of different clinical science. I hope you continue to join with us and please spread the word about uh, usefulness of our YouTube channel, Steer. Thank you very much.